In the United States alone, there are on average 10,000 babies born every day. Wow. Oh, that is so many future podcast listeners. Unfortunately, though, giving birth in the U.S. is way more dangerous than it should be. The U.S. has the highest maternal mortality rate of any high-income country. Look, I don't want to talk about the maternal mortality rate either. It does not scream comedy. And frankly, it makes me very sad, but it is too important to ignore. Which is why I have some serious choice words for the fact that our country has seemingly become numb to this problem. Giving birth to a baby is a truly incredible accomplishment of the body. I actually can't get over it sometimes. And it is by nature dangerous and complicated and natural. All those things can be true. But for something that happens 10,000 times a day, I feel like we should be able to ensure that no woman, regardless of race or class, ever needs to worry that her doctor won't listen to her pain, won't take her concerns seriously, and won't be able to deliver her baby safely and protect her health and life at the same time. It is an unacceptable risk that we make pregnant women take. I know we can do better. This is Choice Words. I'm Samantha B. My guest today is the kind and funny Jenny Slate. Her new book, Life Form, explores these themes of motherhood and is written so beautifully. And we talk about how, as people, we are naturally averse to risk. Giving birth is one of the scarier things we've ever done. So take a listen and make good choices. Thanks for having me. Oh, my God. I'm so excited to be talking to <laughs> me you. Me, too. Hi. Oh, I'm a very big fan of Same yours. Here. Same here. Oh, dear. I just, I can see myself in the recording, and I noticed that I, I'm dressed like the mom from Little House on the Prairie. I don't know if you ever watched that show. I watched it um, if I could sneak it. You know, we weren't, like, really allowed to watch a ton of TV, but I watched it. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're almost in the same color. I've got a mock turtle yeah. on. Yeah. I love <laughs> I've got a little frilly, a little frilly mock turtle. That's so funny that your illicit like escape, if you could sneak TV, yeah. was so incredibly wholesome. Totally. Yeah. I mean <laughs> oh uh we had the, you know, like the TV with the two knobs and you would put it on you to get like the other oh, channels yeah. and and we didn't have cable. And there was no TV guide in our house. So everything just sort of felt like mm -hmm. maybe it's sort of like seeing a bird in the sky. Like maybe today we'll, you know, <laughs> maybe it'll fly <laughs> maybe on today. by. Like, you know, who knows? Half pint is going to churn her own butter. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's going to, oh boy. Um, okay. So before we like the launch point of this podcast is that we talk about like big life choices and kind of like what your relationship is with the choices that you make and how you come to those big decisions. Yeah. And then we just talk about whatever. Cool. So <laughs> Great. I like that. And we really want to talk about your book. I'm so excited for you. Thank like, you. Wow. That's so nice of so you to say. So excited for you. Um, okay. So how are you? Are you a good, are you good at making decisions or like there is no good and bad. What are you like as a big decision maker? Well, um, my husband says this about me, and I think it's true. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes it's like, like, I am saying my husband says this because otherwise it's just, it's too much of a, it feels like a really, really big brag or something. But I, right. um, I think I'm a very good decision maker. Um, yeah, I don't experience a lot of... Um, like regret? Reg I experience regret. No, no. I experience regret. Okay. I will say I don't have really any FOMO. I, do I say FOMO? I mean, mm. am I going to say that? I don't, yeah. I don't really speak. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I don't have any FOMO. Yeah, it, no, but, it came out, it came out yeah, right. Yeah, I'm not a FOMO person, I guess. But I, I no, I do have regret. I will say, like, sometimes. I'm not impulsive. Um, mm -hmm. It's usually very easy for me to understand what I want and what I want to do and, like, where I want to go. Mm. And I take big swings often knowing that it might not be super easy, but that like essentially I kind of need to like bust through that wall that's there. Like, it's like, we got to go over there, you know, right. like I got to get into this area of my life. So I'm just going to freaking go. 
Just going. Yeah. Like it's scary or it feels like you can't predict an outcome of something. Yeah. Is that like, I mean, literally we were, I was, we were going to talk about the book, but is that like how you felt about when you were approaching writing the book? Were you like, I'm trying this. I want this. Yeah. I mean, well, like everything is always a combination for me, I feel like. So mm -hmm. I, I had written a book before this one. My first book was called Little Weirds. That one was like, oh, I appear to be writing a book. Oh, I'm writing a book. And then like I kind of had like a packet of pieces and was able to like sell the book based on those pieces. And I was like getting divorced and I was like, I don't know, like at, the, at that point, like I was sort of, I just, I was like single. Everything sort of felt, it felt like very difficult, but also open and exciting and like whatever. And mm -hmm. then this time I like was like three weeks pregnant I got pregnant okay. on the first night of lockdown in 2020. The first night of lockdown? Yeah. First night. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think out of fear, I like got in touch with my publishers and my editor and was like, I should write another book. Don't you think? Like, I think I should write another book. Don't you think? <laughs> first one did so, like the first one did, it did like well, it was good. It was like, that was a great experience. Oh, I would love to do this mm -hmm. again. But it was really out of fear because it was like, oh great. Now there's a plague and I'm pregnant. And like, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm like really departing from the shores of the painful shores of being an ingenue and like what's out there for me? Like, who knows? And um, I'm really glad that I had the assignment, but for the then over two years that I could write nothing at all because I was mm. like so tired and <laughs> freaked okay. out and like had just kind of like a creative block. That was like a really, really hard. But that said, right. because I went through that, now that the book is complete and I really like it, I experience, it's not relief. It's like, whoa, I'm so grateful that I, that I did this because it was right. really hard. Wow. It's like, it, that's very prescient of you to be like, I have to put something creative on the schedule yeah. with no kind of like knowledge of whether it could, you could really execute it in a way like just like doing a thing I know I'm just gonna do I it. think so like it's like I mean sometimes you can only do what you have the capability to do at the time like it's like this is yeah. the best thing I could have done so I did the best thing that moved me forward but I think also what I learned from that is that like I would like to reduce the amount of decisions I made I make out of um desperation and fear Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. I could also perhaps just tolerate um, being in a moment of like zero forward motion. <laughs> like like sometimes there is right. inertia and that's like, okay. <laughs> right. Do you, now that you have, I mean, you were pregnant in the pandemic. You had your baby. Your baby is now two or three. She's, two or three she's almost four. Oh, she's almost four. Yeah, she's like three Are years, there... nine months. Oh. Amazing. I love babies. I know, me too. I do love little children. Mm -hmm. Are you more able now to take moments where you're like, I'm not going to do a thing or I'm not going to do, I'm only going to focus on this thing, this child or this one thing, or I'm really able to kind of like bifurcate and just give yourself that space? I think that that's been one of the um, main things that I've learned about myself as a parent is that like... Mm -hmm. I am a person that has kind of many things going on at once. Like that's just, that's the nature of what it's like to be like a writer, a comedian, and an actor. Like there, you do have different projects sort of in different stages right. or whatever. And I don't prefer that at all. Like I really don't like that. I <laughs> I remember seeing Adrian Brody on Succession and um, mm -hmm. and saying to my husband like, you know what, that's what I want. I just want for everyone to be like, wow, what a great actor. Let's like give her an awesome part. And she, she just shows up and does like <laughs> one thing. Like I am not trying to do many things. I don't actually want to, mm -hmm. like, I like to chill out, <laughs> but like, I, and, and, and sometimes it is just that I'm like, I feel very interested. So I decide to do another thing that, and it's like, why did I add one more thing? But I think as a parent, I'm like, I don't feel, um, very, like happy and satisfied or like good about myself when I'm with my daughter, but there's like a looming deadline or something. 
Okay. You know, like, I, right. like now I just feel like it's like, um, if there's work to do, I'm going to do it when she's like, you know, she's at preschool. But like once right. we're together, like I can't multitask. I just have to like be with her. I actually think like the reason why I ended up being able to write this book is because my husband went away for 10 days and I brought my daughter who was at that point like two and a half mm -hmm. to my parents' house. But like, it was nice to have the company, but like my mom was, she was actually watching my, one of my other siblings' child, <laughs> children. So like okay. she couldn't really help me. I just mostly had companionship, but like I was just all mm -hmm. childcare all the time, and, like 10 days. And it was just like, I'm not going to, I can't do anything else. I honestly can't. Right. And, uh, and, yeah. and I'm just doing this. The like single focus, single task, like cleaned my brain. I totally appreciate that. I think that is so, it, it does. It cleans your yeah. brain. It like takes a, a scrubber to your brain. Like I have found that I have three kids and when they were little, it was, there was, there was no real possibility to take work home to them. Uh -huh. Like it couldn't happen. Yeah. So you kind of get more productive when you're working because you have to drop it when you're with your children. They will not permit. <laughs> they will not. They force you to – it's almost like a – it's like hard work but also a meditation because you're so separated from everything else and you're just like, now we do this. Totally. I'm also like just – in a really basic way, eternally threatened by the like, <laughs> you know, the song that's like, the cat in the cradle and the soup. Oh, like, yeah, this yes. is just like such a bummer. And like, even as a yes. kid hearing that song, like, I just was like, oh my God, this old man, he's like so filled with regret. <laughs> and it just bummed me out so much. And like, every time that I have to be like, I'll be right there, babe. I just have to like, you know, take this call from uh, whatever it is. Like, I just like, it's like I'm walking, you know, into my bedroom and like closing the door and I can hear her be like, mama. And I'm like, I'm trying to have this conversation and I just hear like, when you're coming home, but I don't know. Or, like, I really, <laughs> well, we'll get together then. I know. It's such oh. a sad, like, and the fact that that guy even, I don't, I can't even remember who's saying, like, can you imagine sitting down being like, what bummer could I do to everyone? Um, a catchy <laughs> tune. So let's make sure they kind of like the tune. And great. Yeah, hook. awesome. And that, but that is like mm -hmm. super threatening. And um, let me serve up this dose of real. Oh my God. For you so that it's a, a tune you can like hum and everybody knows off by heart yeah. that's about a constant regret on a man's death. Totally. <laughs> it's so weird. And like, I remember learning that song like at day camp. Like being in like oh, Massachusetts yeah. at day camp. Like it was like one of the songs we learned. So weird. What? Oh, yeah. All the, I feel like all the songs on the rotation at day camp were just, ours were like, like hard rock and like very sexual. Totally. Like I'm older than you. I'm a lot older than you, but it was a lot of like, okay, we're making lanyards, but also we're listening to Foreigner. Yeah. So hot blooded. <laughs> Everybody get into it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the summer at camp when, like, ever, like, day camp, and everyone was singing Kokomo. You know, it was like, like oh, oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> escape, escape. It just is, I mean, that also is like something about the '80s that everyone was obsessed with, like palm trees and pina coladas and stuff. What yeah, is everyone that? Everyone was a parrot head. <laughs> I know there was like. Such a – and then all those people just moved to Key West. Mm -hmm. And they do live that life where they're just, like, drinking from coconuts. Yeah. On the, and they're all, like, <laughs> so tan. Totally. They're so leathery. Yeah. Just leatherback turtles. Totally, man. Got to get out in that sun. Just get toasted. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So, okay. Your book is not – it's not, like, a very – it's not a typical style of memoir, it's not, it's not like this happened and then something else crazy thing happened mm -hmm. and here's a story about it. It's, it's, just a, it's just a beautiful book. It's not even necessarily a comedy book. It's just a beautiful book that is fun. Thank you. I do love how you talk about the first moments and days of motherhood when you're like learning to be a mother and you want to be the person who like rolls up and can fix everything. And, but it's also like you're a mammal. Yeah. <laughs> this is something your mom did and your mom's mom and you have a new name. How did you decide to write the book this way? Did you even decide or did it just come out that way? Yeah, this is just the way it is. You know, like right. I, I think um, 
if I'm really trying to describe, I guess, what's important to me or like what's been significant. And, mm-hmm. and if the like aim is to just sort of expose an archive and just try to like transmit an experience, then the pressure is off me. Like, the, right. uh, you know, um, if it was more like, these are essays or whatever. I don't even think of it as memoir. Right. I, I just think of it as like, these are just pieces about experiences. But uh, yeah, it just turns out this is kind of how I write. Like some people have like a singing right. voice that it's just what they sound like. I think this is just what I sound like. You also describe a lot of visions and like dreams that do you write down? How do you I guess, how do you hold on to that? Are you like a wake up in the middle of the night and write it down person? I wish I was. I'm not. Often I'm like, this is a $1 billion idea. <laughs> Let me just for sure wake up and have forgotten everything. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I, I do have like a book by the bed, um, but I don't, I don't have a lot of dreams. Um, mm. I have like, like actually like pretty boring ones, but um, mm-hmm. when I was pregnant, um, I did a lot of like weird naps you know, and stuff like that. And I'm just like a real space cadet. Like I, I, I space out. I'm so spaced out. I'm like imagining something and it's not a Mm. dream. Like I'm not unconscious, but, um, you know, I'm doing the dishes and I'm just like fully thinking about just like a daydream. Yeah. A a, a daydream actually, literally a daydream. Yeah. Literally a daydream. Yeah. And I, I think that's what I'm like. Um, and I do try to like journal. I used to do it every day. And then sometimes I just, like if I get up in the morning and uh, and there's like a mess in the kitchen, it's just like I can't really settle down until everything's clean. And um, okay. oh god, it's so bad. And sometimes I miss my journal time because of that. <laughs> Are you? I'm like that too. It's, I can't actually focus my brain unless everything is really tidy. Yeah, yeah. It's a curse. It's really hard. I I, I would like to stop being that way. I, tr- I I'm just trying to like scooch out of that mode. I, I did it today. Like there's a sink full of dishes like over there. Okay. And I'm letting it be there. And I'm, tr- I'm trying to forget about it. That's hard. Yeah. Well, I feel like we could talk at length about that because I'm 50, turning 55. Mm-hmm. And it actually is something that does intensify, I think, when you hit perimenopause, this like need to put things into places yeah. so that you can clear your brain space. I think that's exactly it. I, I I mean, a couple of sessions ago, my therapist was like, do you think you're maybe over identifying with the dishwasher? And I was like, well, okay. Like, I mean, yes, because it's like, if you have, if you have a child um, and you're changing as your child changes, like hopefully that happens. Um, Mm -hmm. And that also means that there's a way to really feel the energy of your life around you and the world around you, your reality as these sort of like shifting planks (laughs) Mm -hmm. and like, like everything's just, it's really in motion. It's, it's all, it's trending towards the positive and growth, but it also means for me that anything that I can put away and like see Mm. as like at rest and in its spot and needing nothing and being quiet is like really important to me. And like, it's like clearing a space so that somebody can do a weird dance in the middle of it. Like, like, I just right. like, what is the, what is the, the lowest amount of in the middle of things that we can have, you know, like what is the lowest amount of that? And like, I just, I just want, it makes me feel calm, but this is the first time in my life that I've been like, do I have light OCD? I don't think I do, but it seems to probably to other people that I do. I just find this so relatable. I uh, often reflect on it and think, okay, like I'm trying to, I can't control the universe. Like I don't have the capacity to control the world. I don't have the capacity to control the world of my children when they're out of the house. Like one is in college or whatever, you know, they're all doing their own thing. And I'm like, okay, I just can control the universe of this place. And it's, Nice to just be able to control one thing, but it does get, it is probably light OCD. I know. (laughs) And I know so many, I have some other friends who are parents and have experienced kind of the same thing, Mm -hmm. but I don't notice my husband doing it. I don't, I don't notice 
him doing it. And I don't think that he, um, <laughs> I don't think he finds a lot of like importance or legitimacy in my concerns. <laughs> Right. Like it's right. so, I totally get right. it. I totally understand how, like, I don't, I've never really exactly understood the phrase. Like when people are like, you're losing the forest for the trees. But what I think is a good example mm. of that is like, I have made a dinner and the dinner is on the table and it's hot and it's the time to eat it. But I'm like, but right. I don't, like, I don't really want to sit you and do this until we close all the cabinets and like, you know, like <laughs> I want to do the dishes so that we don't have, you know, let, then, then, then when we're done with the dinner, there wouldn't be more dishes in the sink. And it's like, great. But now right. the dinner that was hot, it's becoming lukewarm because you're like an idiot. Kind of like the problem with this type of mini <laughs> OCD is that everybody else really, truly benefits from it. Yeah, right. Because it's really like a neat and tidy and there's always dinner. Totally. <laughs> and then so. And that's so, I also feel like that's what, uh, that is tough because it's like, these just happen to be my standards, but like, <sighs> my husband's like a pretty chill dude who could do with a lot less. Like he doesn't need sure. a homemade Right. Marcella Hazan pasta sauce or whatever. Like, he's like, right. I'm totally fine with, like, ragu brand. Like, nobody asked you to do this, you know? And it's like, oh. Uh, no, he appreciates better, it, but, right? but I'm like, but, but it's like, better. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, but I like it. But it this tastes better. Yeah. <laughs> I do think, though, oh, like, my, my issue with it is not that I feel like, oh, uh, I don't, like, I don't feel underappreciated. My issue with it, it's a me thing that I'm like, you know what? Uh, Jenny, like, this is your way of somehow proving to the, like, mean headmistress inside of your psyche that you have, you've done a good job today and, and you know, like, you right. did it. And it's, like, it's all, like, high quality, you know, you did it. And, like, I'm at the point now where I'm, like, I have to find another way to self-define as, like, mm. um you know, a legitimate adult who's like doing a good job, whatever that means, um, because this is not the way. This isn't, I'm like, it right. doesn't feel good to be like this. Right. <laughs> well, I'm happy for your sink of dirty dishes yeah. and it's fine. They're, <laughs> someone else could do them. It's okay. Also being an actor, it's like when when I go to work and I'm on set, I'm not like, oh no, you know, is like, is everything okay at home? Like, do we have toilet paper? Like, I, I completely trust my husband to yeah. totally keep everything going. Um, so I know that there's a version of me where these concerns, like, are just completely irrelevant. It's very comforting to have a partner who you are partners with. Totally. Who you're like, actually, this doesn't have to be this way. Like, I appreciate that someone is actually there. Yeah. You know, someone's like filling in the cracks. Like, there is... A foundation. Yeah, yeah, totally. So it can, it's, okay, this is good. We'll have to off-channel about what I'm like before I go on an airplane. Oh, God, yeah. I swear to God, it's like, <laughs> it's like, did you ever see Thelma and Louise? Of course. You know that scene where uh, Susan Sarandon, I can't ever remember which one was named which, um, where she's going on the trip and then she has like one clean dish towel and she has one sip of water and then she puts the glass, rinses the glass and puts it on the tea towel. <laughs> It's like, I'm like, yep. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Correct. Totally. I know. I it's it. so weird. I've been told for so my weird. entire life that I'm messy. And now it turns out that I'm not. There Who you knew? go. Who knew? Okay. I do want to talk about section phase three and phase four, which are pregnancy and baby. Mm -hmm. From You have this great line about how when you were about to have your baby, you found out there had been an earthquake at your home in Massachusetts and everything was okay. And you were like, the house had been shaken, but it was still a house. Yeah. And that kind of gave you clarity about your body. This is such a huge question, but how do you relate to your body now a few years hence postpartum? I, I think um, there's so much um, really unhelpful and actually hurtful and threatening discussion about like, um, the postpartum body and like mm -hmm. snapping back or whatever. And, um, yeah. and even if you have an opinion about whether or not that is like just preposterous and like um, a terrible thing to put on, on people, uh, it yeah. doesn't mean that it's still not threatening. And like, if you're aware of standards, 
then you're aware of them. Even if you're right. like, but I don't prescribe to that. Like it can still hurt your feelings. Yeah. Um, and what has been surprising to me is that I'm not um, living with the, um, like the strain or energy of opposition, like when you're pushing back on something, but that like, mm -hmm. I mean, like I like, like clothes and you know, like I'm like shopping, right. like it's not like I'm like, and now I <laughs> don't care. Like, but it's, it's more that <laughs> I'm like, I don't care though. Like, like I used to, partner more with this voice. And I, I write about it in the book. There's like this piece about, it's a letter to a doctor just asking if I can just like become old because like, I'm so fucking annoyed about the stress around the struggle of like, what do you do between 40 and 80? My feelings about my body are that I really don't want it to get cancer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel very upset at myself for the 18 years that I smoked cigarettes on and off. I want to like take good care of it. And I realize like, I'm like, wow, that was not my first concern about my body before I had the baby. Right. And then once I was like growing this thing in my body, um, I was not one of the, like I was a pregnant person that was like, oh no, I can't have turkey cold cuts. You know, like I wasn't like, right. like, <laughs> like I, I was like, but I wasn't like all organic. Like, you know, I was still sure. kind of, you know, eating Doritos and stuff. We flew back to LA for me to have the baby. And I think the last thing that I like got door dashed to our house was like, Mm -hmm. gummy bears and Tums. No, right, and I was like, right. I'm not right. a, a temple. Uh, it was, this is not like a, <laughs> but, um, but now the way I feel about my body is I'm just like, it's a mystery, but it also is an incredible, in, incredible um, apparatus of science. Right. And it is me. I can't really like take credit for it because I didn't like invent human beings. You know, like I'm not the I'm not the designer. <laughs> I hate what? to I, you know, I'm going to drop this bomb on this podcast today <laughs> and let everyone know that I am not actually the Lord. Um, it's crazy. Like I'm not the biblical <laughs> Lord, um, the storied Lord. <laughs> um, but yeah, also as like, I mean, I was raised Jewish, but I am like a functional sort of like atheist. And like, I'm just like, whoa, this is crazy that my body did this. And I feel very, very not judgmental about my body anymore. That's great. Yeah, it's weird because you would think um, I would maybe feel the opposite. But like, I just kind of feel like, oh my God, like I'm just so glad something is over. Right. There is something so, I do remember like giving birth and going, I'm incredible. Yeah. Like an actual goddess. Yes. Like what? <laughs> Look what I did. Yeah. I don't think anyone has ever done this before. <laughs> I made a baby come out. But that is the thing is that like, you know, I don't know if anyone said this to you during your pregnancies, but it's like, um, People were like, people have been having babies for bazillions of years. And I was like, cool. Well, I've actually never had one even one time. So um, uh, I'm. Uh, yeah, I don't have a I don't have a memory yeah. of this. I don't have like a sense memory. Yeah, I'm the newest mm -mm. team member here. I've never gone through the motions before. Like I and I'm not a, a natural risk taker in my body. Like I'm not. Mm -hmm. And I was saying this in my last stand up special, but like. I am not an adrenaline junkie. I don't even want to ride a bike. I'm not, I am probably emotionally very intense. I think like I am, I'm a very sensitive person, but I am not looking to prove myself via a physical thing. Right. And I like, I think actually giving birth was like one of my central fears. And before I met my husband, I didn't even think I wanted to have kids. Right. Right. I was so frightened by it. And like in every way, physically and emotionally and like, so it was deeply new for me. And the fact that like I did it, it was not perfect, mm -hmm. but it was perfect for me and for our family and our family exists and our daughter was like, okay, and I'm okay. Like that is not, I don't have anything else that's ever happened to me that's similar to that. I love the way that you speak about it because I think like we do such a bad job particularly actually in North America, if I can go ahead and say that, like mm -hmm. of making, we don't do a good job of making people less scared to have children. We don't like talk about the joy of it. And we don't talk about, mm -hmm. we only talk about the things that are ter terrifying about yeah. it. Like, 
almost kind of frame it as like a disease or like a horrible thing that your body's going this like awful experience and then you're never going to be you're not going to be the same and then your yeah. children are just like a drag and they're just like yelling at you all the time i'm like no <laughs> it's actually yeah really fun there are not many great examples of discussions where you can kind of have just like a simultaneous stuff happening <laughs> like right. it is something that i want to do for myself which is to create uh, a new context mm -hmm. but that includes all of the real things right so that's like totally different than dissociation or mm -hmm. denial or like lying um or just being like a weird flippity gibbet that's like everything's cool like <laughs> right. Right. love and light like i i i want because I am a person who like weirdly is super hopeful and optimistic and I do experience depression from time to time, I don't want to have to choose between selves. Right. Like, which is the real Jenny? Am I like the peppy one who thinks that like today is just like there are so many different beauties to see or am I the one that feels numb? I, I can't, I feel like right. I'm kind of a ghost in the room. Like, it's all the same. And, and, you know, like I'm not dealing with a mental health issue that is like, oh, that sounds like bipolar or something. Like I don't have right. big extremes, but in fact, I am a person that is like, I exist on like in a waveform. And I think most of us do, mm -hmm. but um, it's kind of all within <laughs> one day. And I, like, I can say that giving birth um, for me was one of the most positive experiences of my life while also being one of the most dangerous situations that I've been in. Right, right. And that I felt at once victorious and scared and that I felt at once like incredibly supported in like medical ways, emotional ways, and also was 100% alone mm -hmm. without being lonely. Like it's right. like, I'm just trying to like figure that out. And if I have to choose one, that means that part of my experience and myself falls away and then I start to feel weird. So I'm like trying to write, like how do we just right. say that there are many components, but create a new context, like in my specific voice, so that we don't have to rely on those like old tropes of either like, you're the, you know, the lady that started Moon Juice or whatever, you know, like a fancy sure. juice company in LA and for some reason you're just, really good at everything. Like I felt really confused about the sort of like earth, earth mother um, mm -hmm. movement that I felt was the, I, I really understand why that's there. And there's a lot about that that I think is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I also think like, because patriarchy sucks so much, like <laughs> right. we we're like really geared towards being like, don't let them make a decision for you. And then I felt confused about my own decision to be like, I want an epidural. Uh, oh, you know, like, right. I don't want to feel a taint rip, man. Like, I want an right. epidural. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, like, how much do you, like, tune into all that? Because, like, like, do you absorb all that shit? Like, well, first of all, I want to say that I appreciate how much you bring your whole self to your work. And I think, like, you feel that. That's why you're... I don't know. That's why I, as a fan, I'm like, yes, because like, I feel like you approach everything that you do with like, just honesty and just like openness. I don't know. I feel it as a viewer or like, I feel it as an audience member, but like. I'm glad. I mean, and that's not to say, I'm not trying to like, I have many good friends who I respect and I totally like, I'm like, I'm glad they did it, that they were like in a birthing tub in their house. Right. Yes. But I, you know, like, and I'm not, so I'm not against any one way sure. honestly, to do anything. All I want is to be able to make the decisions that are like, um, for my mental state and my body. Mm -hmm. Like if we're trying to say, you know, that, um, like an empowered stance is being able to make choices. Right when there are, are a lot of like intersecting situations, mm -hmm. that's what I want. And I remember being like, I don't want to feel shame or less natural or less courageous because I know for sure that I want to get an epidural. Oh, no. You know what I mean? When I was pregnant, I was like, give me all the info. Okay. What's it like on the like, the place called The Farm? Like, did you ever read that book by like Ina May something? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it was like, 
oh, this seems so wonderful for these women, but I don't want that. Yeah. Because I really want more medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But like, mm, I also want the chance of, I guess, trying to push the baby out because like, I don't know what that's like, you know? Yeah. And like, I just like took everything in and finally tried to figure out like, what seems the most like me in a situation that doesn't seem like me at all? (laughs) Right, right, right. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I, that's so funny. I remember like I have, because I grew up in Canada where Mm -hmm. people do like, people have, some people have home births. It's more done there because there's Mm -hmm. the medical system supports it. It's not done a lot, but it's Mm -hmm. an option for you that's like more reasonable because they have like, there are things in place for you if you go down that path. And my friends were like, we're going to do that. And I was like, that's so great. I'm not. <laughs> no, thank you. And then what Yeah, is, that, that's mm-mm. not where my no, inclination to be challenged mm-mm. lies. Yeah, there's life has enough challenges. I mean, God yeah. bless. Like, go for it. That's not every great. challenge needs to be accepted. No, it like that's a, you know what I mean? <laughs> like not. I'm just like, you don't. That's not mm-mm. how, at least for me, like that is not how I prove nope. myself to myself. Like I'm never gonna prove whether or not I'm courageous by like jumping out of a plane. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I don't want to. No. That sounds awful. Also, going on roller coasters is so bad. Like, Mm. what is it? Why? It's so scary before you're, like, nervous the whole time. And then they do the thing where you go slowly up the... I'm like, no, I don't... I don't need that. It's so weird. It was... There was, like, a pocket of time when I was like, I like it. Right. I like Space Mountain. Okay. And then... All of a sudden, it was like, I don't need that. First, I was like, I don't need it. I don't want it. No roller coasters. Right. That was like that was like 32 years of my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then weirdly, I was like, roller coasters. Interesting. I like it. I like it. And then that was like four years. And then it was like, never again. No roller coasters. I don't, I don't like, I don't want, why would I be upside down? <laughs> we, and also, don't you think it's like so much worse when everybody tries to convince you to do the thing and your body knows? Yeah. Your body's like, this is not a good idea for me. Like, I just, I don't know why. I don't even know why it's bad to go on a trampoline right now. I'm not oh. even sure. And then you do it because everyone's like, jump. And you're like, okay. And then you're like, nope, guys, yeah. I have an injury. My pelvic floor yeah. fell out, and I, I knew know. it. <laughs> my body tried to tell me, and then I fucking totally. listen to all you. Oh, oh my god! Just... I'm. A, I think like a big change is about to happen for me in that area, not my pelvic floor area, um, <laughs> but the, like for my whole life, I've been like really scared of horses and like against oh, them, mm-hmm. basically. Yep, and like. A burgeoning curiosity exists in me. It's mm-hmm. like very slow moving where I'm like, maybe I will in like seven years go on a horse. It's going really slow. But I, yeah. I, know, I noticed the, do- the, 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 the door's door. opening. Okay. Yeah. It's opening. That's so... But it, I might not get on one. But it, but it is opening. Were you ever on a horse? You're never on a horse your whole life. Never went I was on, on a one? horse at camp oh, one at summer. Camp. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> uh, not for me. These are not no. meant to be. We're not supposed to go on them. No, no way. They were no, not born no. on this earth for us to be on top. They have their own yeah. jazz going on. Oh, my God. I used to have like, I can't even remember if it, I feel like I've tried to put the, my jokes about horses in like both of my comedy specials and it's, it's always gotten taken out for time, I believe. I feel like maybe I did you know, do something on like a late night show. Like yes, I finally I was saw. like, I'm going to say this I horse thing. Yep, yep. Um, but the fact is that, you know, have you ever experienced the true zone, which is it's a convergence of, it's a bit because you feel deeply about it. Right. And it's like yeah. always activated. Like I could go into this horse thing mm-hmm. yeah. in my sleep. I feel it so deeply. <laughs> I don't know. Do you ever, anyway. you know what? The place to go. I've never been. Okay. This is a, such a side. It's a horse store. We can talk. My mom used to have horses. Like we could talk about. And I went to Nevada a couple of years ago to see the wild horses, to talk uh-huh. about wild horses. And they have a whole life outside of us. Yeah. Yeah. They're wild. Yeah. They're well, wild that's animals. Crazy. It was so beautiful. Just watching them do their 
the thing that they're supposed to do. I'm not sure we need to control them. And they're not that controllable. Yeah. 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 Even when you're on top of them, sometimes they're like, I'm going to fucking go over here. And you I mean, cannot that's, that's stop the scariest me. part. Yeah. 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 I'm going to rub you on a tree. And you're like, what? <laughs> Don't. And it's like, no, we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. They're hooves. Like, like, like they're mm-hmm. just like, when they just, they, they're just going to kick you or something. It, it, that's crazy to me. <laughs> my mom used to know. Oh, sorry. This is not about, this is not a horse podcast, but my mom. I mean, it's your podcast. You could change it. it. Could. You could make it. Horse podcast. You could do it. Yeah. <laughs> my mother had horses and she had a friend who had also horses. And, you know, sometimes horse girls can become horse women who become like, just like they're so into it, you know? Yeah. And this woman fed her horse a carrot. She would feed her horses carrots with her mouth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. They would end up kissing. It was like oh. Lady in the, she would Lady in the Tramp a carrot with a horse. And the but their horse, teeth. Yep, the horse bit half her face. No. Yes. No. Took a whole, I'm like, they That's, can't see straight. Oh, it couldn't see her oh, face. That is oh, so gnarly. It's so yeah. gnarly. It's so bad. It's like, oh, I just don't. You no. know, the other day my husband was like, my daughter wanted to do like a dance, like a butterfly dance. Like she was like, this is what a butterfly looks like and I'm going to describe it in a dance. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, great. I like this. I'm really yeah. glad. You know, something like that happens and you're like, we're on the right track. We're, we're This is a cool person that... Yes. We've helped, you know, become herself so far. And she has, like, in her preschool, they have a chrysalis. Okay. Um, like, in their class. But, you know, she was on the counter. She was, like, on the countertop. And there was, like, she was in her, like, tights, like, in her little stocking tights. Mm. And I was afraid she was going to slip. And, you know, this is just, like, kind of classic Jewish upbringing. Like, everything in me is, like, get off the thing. You know, like, <laughs> right. I'm just, like, an old Jewish lady inside of my head. And... My husband and I were talking about it later, and I was just like, I don't know. It's just like, can't we just reduce the amount of, like, risk-taking and challenges that don't really need to happen? Like, couldn't we have just gone into the, live, you know, the other room or mm-hmm. and just done the dance in there? And, and like, he's right in that it's like, but she was safe. I was watching her. Like, this is really about you. Um, and I think that's true. But that's really how I feel about horses. I'm like, you have to bring that in? Like, did you have to? It's such a it's such a lot of work, and you're you're bringing in a whole thing, and you're amplifying the mm-hmm. danger now. Like you're increasing it mm-hmm. because this is here. Yeah. Well, you know, it, you know, it takes seven years, take ten years. It yeah. may never happen. <laughs> you no, know, no judgment, no judgment on this. And end. if I were to do it, it's not going to be on like a mountain. You know, like we're not going to add no. in a slope. It's like a meadow. No, this is a yeah. meadow. This is a mm-hmm. meadow. Mm-hmm. Flat. This whole, the horse is probably it's already tired. Like, yes. been tired out, not a stallion, like, you know, like a normal horse. Yeah. Like a horse yeah, who's right. been some, he's just seen the seen some shit. So yeah. So try and go fast. Doesn't even want to. No way. Mm-mm, no, thank you. Um, okay. This has been so great. I'm, my, last, my last question to you, and this has been rollicking. I heard that you grew up in a haunted house. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about it on Rachel Dratch's show. I talked about my haunted house on her show. I also grew up in a house with ghosts. Who, uh, where was your, what was your, who was your house ghost? It was a single ghost? In well, your, your it house? was a single ghost for a while. Mm-hmm. I never saw it. My my dad saw it. Okay. Um, And it was the ghost of a sea captain. Get that. I know. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, it's crazy. Oh, stop I feel it. like, you know, not to t- tie it back to the beginning, but people think about ghosts, I feel like, as being like sort of little house on the prairie, people just staring at them. Yeah, like in a long dress. You know, like dress. people in a pinafore. Yeah, yeah long dress. Yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. This, I think, was more of a um, a 20th century ghost. Mm-hmm. I think we're talking about 30s, 40s, I want to okay. say. Um and it was, I mean, what my dad thought was that it was the ghost of a man who had been writing love letters to the woman who used to live in the house, but he was not her husband. She was married. Because my dad discovered all the love letters underneath the <gasps> um, the carpet on the stairs, the runner that went up the stairs. And and when he took the run the letters and he like took them and put them in his like office at the top of the stairs, that was when like a couple nights later he saw the ghost and he like smelled the pipe smoke of the ghost and he just was like oh my god I've really stumbled into something I'm not supposed to be in and um but then my mom and my little sister saw like a lady 
come out of like a room. There were like two rooms like uh -huh. facing each other, uh, like uh, uh, on either side of a hallway. And um, they basically saw her like come out of one room towards the other mm -hmm. and then like towards the other opening. And the, but then like weirdly just like float up into the like light fixture. Oh my God. I know. And it was like the silhouette, like, like in profile and they both saw it. So what are you going to say? You, just, you know, like everyone's you, like, well, not corroborated, but it's like they said they, they did. Said they did. If, if it's, if two people, if more than one person saw a spectral yeah. presence, then it's not, <laughs> then, so do you still have the letters? No, my dad, um, he burnt them up okay. in the fire. Okay. Yeah, in the fireplace. Okay. He was like, they're in the fire. In the fires. <laughs> when you know, when the, the fire came. Down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he burnt the whole house down. And, and so the letters were not a problem anymore. Yeah. That's so funny. I often wonder, like, in the future, like, is, all, you know, all of our ghosts and whatever that we get to see, okay? Are, mm -hmm. are again like they're like from the 30s from the in long dresses they're like these yes. sort of magnificent creature what is going to happen in a hundred years like are all the ghosts a hundred years from now going to be wearing like Coors Light t-shirts I was gonna like, say like it's gonna be like like the outline of like a Lululemon camel toe or whatever <laughs> <laughs> like there's a guy and he was in board shorts and he was I think he was like yeah. in flip flops it was Under Armour. It was, uh, you know, like, I'm like, it was a juicy suit. Like, <laughs> oh my God. This was so fun. I just thank you thank so you much. Thank you for having me. And your book is so awesome. And I'm just very you. happy for you. And I think it's like a piece of art that you have released into the world. And, um, and it's, I really encourage everyone to get it and read the well, hell I out really of it. Appreciate you talking to me today. It was so fun. So fun. What a just like, it was a hang. That was Jenny Slate, and I had no choice but to look up one thing. I loved hearing about her haunted house. As you may know, I grew up in a haunted house as well, so I had to check. How many Americans think they also live in a haunted house? One in six. What? I thought I was special. Anyway, thanks for joining us. I'm Samantha Bee and see you next week for some more Choice Words. Thank you for listening to Choice Words, which was created by and is hosted by me. The show is produced by Zvia Baron Reinstein with editing and additional producing by Josh Richmond. We're distributed by Lemonada Media, and you can find me at Real Sam B on X and Instagram. Follow Choice Words wherever you get your podcasts or listen ad-free on Amazon Music with your Prime membership. <laughs>